From the Denver Broncos Media Center, welcome to Broncos Country Tonight. Welcome to Broncos Country Tonight as we preview the Broncos versus L.A. Chargers, the final game of the regular season. Certainly for the Broncos, they're trying to avoid being swept in the AFC West. That's on the line. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you add one more win to the season. I guess it's uh, a little bit better than four. Five sounds a little nicer. I don't know. But in the end, Benjamin, uh, the Broncos season didn't go the way they wanted to. But they did see some things last week against the Kansas City Chiefs that bring a bit of optimism, especially on the offensive side of the ball. And I think if you start there saying, hey, I just want to see Russ, and I see that offense moving the ball scoring in the red zone when they're getting those opportunities. We're seeing better red zone production over the last several weeks with the exception, of course, the Rams game. So um, starting there, that's what I want to see. Yeah. I, I want to see them continue to look like a professional football team on the, on the offensive side of the ball. You know, I didn't feel as disjointed. Uh, just not was calling the plays and, uh, obviously, you had, uh, uh, you know, Jerry Rosberg in command his first game as the interim head coach, and it, it, it didn't feel disjointed. It felt like they were, you know, like they were a pro football team. They, they kept pace with the Kansas City Chiefs for the most part. Uh, there were a few mistakes from Russ. Uh, the offensive line was not where it needed to be, but uh, overall, it had a better feel to it. I'd like to see the line improve. I'd like to see the run game improve. Uh, they were still tilted a little bit, two to one past a run. Uh, I'd like to see the run game improve a little bit, be a little bit more effective. They were four six and four nine, I think, for uh, Latavius Murray and, yeah. and Chase Edmonds on the ground. I, I'd commit to them. This is okay. If we're seeing that, let's commit to it. Uh, especially with the Chargers, who can be run on. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I think that's what I'm really looking forward to seeing. Yeah, and there were some creative uh, moments with the run game. I thought we talked about the going gun two back, and mm -hmm. um, it really kind of opens up your options, not only in the run game but even in the pass game, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Uh, the things that you can do, if, you've got, if you're if you in gun two back and you've got a, a, a back who can flex out as a receiver, uh, it makes a world of difference because, and, we, and we've seen it before, dating back to really Rich Gangarello, when they would they would run, uh, they would do a shotgun single back and they would take the back and they'd motion him out of the backfield. Well, now you've eliminated the threat of the run. Now, now the ends know they don't have to contain and keep, pin their ears back and come get you. When you have gun two back, uh, and you motion one of the backs out, you've still got the threat of the RPO and the run with the quarterback. And so uh, it allows you to do a man zone check and then turn around and still have what you need to be able to run a play there. And, you know, I, I love that they're doing that. I've been kind of banging the table for, for a couple of years. It's just, it was nice to finally see it and watch it be effective. Yeah, well, and I think you just nailed it right there. I mean, it still kind of keeps your options open. You can run a little RPO. And we did see more of that in this game. Um, you saw Russ also on the move as a result of that. So um, I, I, I do like that little kind of tweak to things. And, and I guess it just sort of opens up like what else can we see here? I mean, the fact is, um, I guess if you go like Waterboy, last game of the year, can't hold anything back. What does that look like for the Denver Broncos when, when you're going into this game saying, hey, there's going to be some changes on the coaching staff. We all know that. Yeah. You're in front of your home crowd. I know the players want to play hard for their home, the home fans because it's been such a disappointing season. So, so what other things could they throw out there I think that's kind of exciting. Yeah, I think so. I'd like to see them, you know, empty empty the clip, as it were, that's with what some, I'm saying. some of yeah. the stuff. I don't want to see them do that right away. I'd like to see them, you know, show some core competency first. Uh, but I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, uh, you know what, Brandon, uh, stay on the sideline. We're not kicking extra points today. Let's empty out all the two-point plays. Yes, right. Uh, like, you know, like uh, again, you know, you're going forward to midfield, fourth and medium, fourth and short. I mean, what, what, what difference does it make? And plus, you have the home field advantage. The crowd's going to be quiet. Those opportunities should present themselves. You know, and we, I mean, these are things we've been talking about maybe for a little while mm -hmm. with this team. It's like, hey, you've really got nothing to lose. At this point, you can be uber aggressive. And what's the outcome? You're going to lose another game? Okay, well, then that's what it is. But the fact is, in front of your home crowd, I think they'd like to see you going out and showing a lot of uh, intensity and showing a lot of passion and, and trying to legitimately win the game, and, and in fact, maybe even win the game convincingly. I mean, think about what the optimism level will be surrounding Russell Wilson and, and a lot of these players on offense that are going to be back next year. Think about that part of it, and, and when you, you go into the offseason, and I guess maybe that, that plays well for the players, but I think for the fans, if nothing else, that'll play huge. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think the other thing I want to see is Montreal Washington. Yeah. I want to see uh, Jerry Rossberg bring him out the doghouse and see if a week off got him fired up and ready to go. Um, you know, he kind of had the same... Uh, mentality problem I think Deontay Spencer had I think Washington's more talented but uh, he had the same problem he's still trying to win a job that he is his quit trying to win the job just play it smart and when you need to pull when you, when you need to you know pull it out pull it out but don't don't be trying to make a play every time and all that kind of stuff or five yards deep trying to bring it out all that kind of stuff don't don't do all that on the defensive side of the ball um certainly I think that you still haven't had a defensive score this year those opportunities 
can present themselves, but it, again, it, it's sort of few and far between to get a pick six or a fumble recovery for a touchdown. But again, if you want to really kind of blow out a division opponent at home and, and really put a sort of stamp at the end of the year, um, it might have to come with the defense doing some extraordinary things. Yeah, um, and Justin Herbert's usually good for a turnover a game. Now, he, he's also good for two or three touchdowns a game in most cases. Oh, yeah. He's usually good for a turnover a game, so there's going to be probably an opportunity to make that happen. Um, Austin Eckler, I don't know if he's going to play in this game or not. They may arrest him for the playoffs, but, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a very good running back. He doesn't typically fumble the football, so I think it's going to have to be an interception if you're, doing, if you're yeah, looking at a turnover. Yeah, I think the Chargers, the Chargers are playing with the possibility, I think, of moving up one spot in the wild card, but they obviously aren't going to win the division because the chiefs have already sewn that up. So um, I, I don't think that the movement for them really changes very much. They're going to play their players because there's no reason not to necessarily. I mean, they are locked in, but again, unless you're trying to play for a specific matchup, you're going to go ahead and pl- go out there and play. Uh, but at the same time, you're right. There might be some guys, especially if the game gets a little lopsided, maybe you start to make some decisions again for the Broncos. This is just one of those moments, like I said, for the fans. I mean, you know, do this, do this for them. And I know that matters to those players. I've, I've had enough conversations over the course of this season. Uh, the frustration that that locker room feels as a result of the season not going the way they wanted it to, let alone the way the fan base had high expectations. I know that weighs on them. And I think that they, they want to show a little bit more what they did against the Kansas City Chiefs. And to be honest, if they put that kind of performance together, the one they did against the Kansas City Chiefs, get a couple better whistles maybe, um, I think they're going to win this game. Still on that, huh? I mean, listen, man, I watched it again this morning, and it it, it still blows my mind. Like a couple of those calls, there still, were some, there were some bad still calls. frustrating. And again, it listen, I, I oftentimes subscribe to if you're really complaining about the refs afterwards, it's probably a bit of a loser's mentality. Right. But still, it's hard not to be like, okay, well, those are momentum changing moments, right? I mean, that Russell Wilson with his arm going forward, mm-hmm. you were you're basically right there in field goal range. Right. That could have been a, a massive swing because the Chiefs completed a pass, which, by the way, I did think was a completion. Um, and and they got in field goal yeah. range. They ended up having it blocked, but um, that one, the Cortland Sutton one, I, we're not going to argue that. But you know, the Cortland Sutton play, uh, there was just there was just a few like moments. It was like ah, man, that that changes things. Mm-hmm. But again, you're going to have to find a way to beat the Kansas City Chiefs um, coming up next year because that uh, ship has sailed. Yeah, uh, they, they had their opportunities this year, came close, but uh, couldn't quite pull it off. So get the Chargers, don't get swept by the West, and build some momentum for but next that's year. that's big, isn't it? I mean, don't you think? I, I think so. I think I'm more about, uh, for me, I'm like, give Seattle a lower pick, I hope. You know? Uh, yeah, but, I mean, know. we're still top five. I mean, at this point, it's, yeah. you know, what are you, three right now? I think that you're you're hoping lower, but yeah. it's, it's, it's almost inconsequential. They're going to get a blue chip player. They're going to get a very talented player there. Um and and you of course are going to have to figure out where your pick is because the 49ers continue to be just good truck trucking everybody all the way through the into the postseason. So um, yeah, I, I think for the Broncos, yeah, they're, they're going to have a lot of changes. We'll obviously spend a lot of time over the next several weeks talking about coaching searches and and what kind of changes really need to take place. But you know, for this final game, I just I want to see them go out there and I want to see them, as you said, sort of empty the clip. I want to see them go out there with intensity in front of the fan base. I want to see them really, really put together a performance like the fans have been waiting for all season. Yeah. Show us what we're going to be looking for next year. You know, show us show us what we got to look forward to. Absolutely. All right. For Benjamin Albright, I'm Ryan Edwards. Thanks for watching Broncos Country Tonight. Town.